Hello everyone, welcome to our Inspiring Thoughts podcast today. We're very, very lucky to have Tom Martin from Lloyds Banking Group. And Tom is the business platform lead uh, for economic crime prevention. So a very big title there, Tom, to get out of my <laughs> mouth already in the morning. Uh, and the second thing is also Tom's a non-executive director ambassador for the East of England. So Tom, great to have you on board on the podcast today. Glad to be here. No, thank you, Tom. So, Tom, before we get into um, all of our um, podcast guests have had seven questions in advance. So before we dive into those today and really get a bit nosy about Tom's history and past, um, Tom, would you just tell our viewers a bit, brief bit about your career history and how you've got to where you are today? Yeah, of course. So the um, first job I remember was stacking shelves in a, in a Morrison's in, in, in Wakefield. So I'm a, I'm a northerner. Um, I've been... Um, I was trained as an engineer, so I worked manufacturing drive shafts in, in Thailand. But the last 19, 20 years have been working for Lloyds Banking Group in its various forms. Um, worked out in Switzerland doing international risk. Well, ran a call centre up in Glasgow and currently fighting the good fight against the fraudsters and people committing financial crime. Yeah. So and it's um the bit I've always fascinated because Tom and I have worked together in the past, but um how you've gone to make things happen. You like I've, I think the job in Switzerland, you flew back from a holiday a day before to fly to Switzerland, but you made those things happen in your career. You've always been one that's always gone to get things, haven't you? Yeah, I've definitely um been pretty determined and pretty focused on what I wanted to achieve, definitely yeah. without without a doubt. Um Probably at the cost of a few of a, of a few things, but yeah. um, but also you know I'm um pretty focused character. Yeah, yeah, and it's and I think that's the bit of sometimes when I speak to about people all on our authentic leadership about being driven, focused, goals that they want to get somewhere uh, and actually find a way to make it happen. If that mm. makes sense. So so if we dive into the seven questions of today, so Tom, as you were growing up, who inspired you as a leader? Uh, from your perspective? Um, so uh, there's definitely a bit of family in here. And I was thinking about um, my dad, who I've got six uncles. You, you know me, Steve, that, that, you know, I'm a big football fan, but I was brought up in an environment where those kind of role models were yeah. Aston Villa fans and, 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 and they really loved the football. And I, I was obsessed by football from when I was a kid. But I think yeah. that has really formed my psyche and approach to yeah. life in so many ways because, yeah. um, you know, th through football, I played at a, a decent, decent level, y you um, have to work hard. There's yeah. no, I don't think there's any substitute for that. You have to, you know, cope with a bit of pressure. You know, when you yeah. play some of the year, you know, like the representative games or you play for a, an academy or something like that. Um, but you also have to continually seek to improve and get yeah. better and train hard. And, yeah. um, you know, I think that that's a bit of a philosophy. To, to almost, yeah. I know we didn't prep, or, you know, prep this, Steve, or anything, did we? But that is... I think what I've taken to my career in many ways and um, if I do a bit of soul search which these kind of questions make you reflect on yeah. I think that has formed a lot of my approach to life I really do yeah yeah and I love the bit there about working hard so yeah. if, if I've looked at all the other kind of CEOs I've worked with other people I've worked with they haven't got there by luck mm. they've worked hard to get to their position and put the effort in the longer hours that that's yeah. imperative it just doesn't doesn't happen by luck does it Tom Oh, de definitely not. And, and also, um, I think sometimes you can look at, you know, success stories and in inverted commas. But I tell you, um, I I've made so many mistakes along the way, um, at, uh, but I've learned from them. And, yeah. um, you know, that's, those made me stronger. And that's the same in football as well, you yeah. know, our sport, that you yeah, make a lot of mistakes. And actually, I think some of the best learning are from yeah. mistakes. And yeah. they, they kind of get you fitter and stronger to face the next challenge. Yeah. And I watched um, a bit last night of the England game. Um, and then and it, it didn't sound nice, but I can see there's a bit here. So when Harry Maguire come on, every time he got the ball, there was like cheers from the Scottish crowd, etc. He made a mistake. There was an own goal, etc. But I've got to give that guy credit. He carries on, so keeps wanting to, and he's taken a lot of flack recently. And that's the bit about him trying to learn, get better, etc., uh, and demonstrating that kind of resilience, isn't it? Oh, w w without a doubt. Uh, um, uh, and um, you know, resilience comes in in many forms, doesn't it? You know, it's, there's that there's that 
that, that element. Um, but you, you know, you, you also know, Steve, that um, you know my youngest daughter, she's now four. She just started school. Her, her first full day of school is today, actually. But yeah. I, I took her in, so I'm not that bad a dad because I did take her in school. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> please say you took her in, Tom. Please. <laughs> but but this is her first full day, so the first yeah. um, kind of nine till yeah. three day, um, and you know she's had two open heart surgeries and she's yeah. and she's four, and um, you know that taught you know myself and my wife a lot about resilience yeah. and um you know what, what's really really important in life and how you can deal with um those kind of personal challenges at the same time you've got a lot going on at work and yeah. um i think that makes you a or has made me a more human and yeah. a significantly better leader yeah and it, and, it, and i'll be funny i really appreciate you sharing about your daughter because i was aware of that but actually that that kind of learning from it of what's it made it better to a more focused outcome rather than still in that past of holding on to it you're looking at forward focus isn't it oh yeah d- definitely and um you know i i remember um you know it, yeah, the moment we got told that there was um something not quite right when we were, when my wife was having the kind of the 20-week scan i remember going to great almond street hospital yeah. and being told that you know there's a 50 50 chance of her um making it um i remember being after the first operation and seeing like like your one-year-old daughter with like or literally i think it was about eight different connections of fluids yeah. going into her body and it, and it just makes you realize what's re- what's really important how what, what i valued by my bosses at the time i'll never yeah. forget the support i got steve and it was yeah. it wasn't about um yeah yeah, following any rule book, it was did did my boss genuinely care yes. about me? Yeah. And um did they do everything to shield me from any other demands at, at work? Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. gave me the time I needed to focus on my family. And I hope that's um, you know, something that, you know, my teams would say that that I do as well. Yeah. And that's really that goes into the like, kind of next question about that positive leadership at that time. It's not the rule book all the time, is it, Tom? Mm. You can't suddenly get a rule book on you going through kind of a very, very serious thing in your family life to go. Well, let me have a look at the page. How do I deal with it? It's about being genuine and caring. Um, yeah. for that point. That's that's imperative, isn't it? Not always having a rule book to help you. Exactly. Yeah. And how would you describe if if an alien landed on this planet and said, "What's Tom's?" leadership style how would you describe your leadership style yeah so so i always find this one a, a, a bit tricky but what teams tell me and people tell me i get feedback on quite regularly is i'm really a, va- a values-led leader and and that i don't connect with that i don't because i don't see it myself but it's constantly you know constant feedback i get and what i really think that means if i try and unpick it a bit is yeah. keeping your word Yes. Um, you know, do you have like good intent? Yeah. Are you trying to do the right thing? I mean, yeah. Like you say, Bank, that's, you know, being a, a real force for good and trying to do the right thing for not yeah. just my area, but for the bank and our customers. Yeah. And, you know, am I really transparent about, you know, if it's kind of bad news or or yeah. kind of decisions people don't want to make, but can they understand the, the rationale yeah. and why, why yeah. we're doing it? Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, you know, uh, some people just, you know, there's a there's a probably a unarticulate way of describing it, but I won't yeah. use. But it's just don't be an idiot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 and um, yeah. it comes down to very human yeah. um, characteristics that I yeah. think are really important. Yeah, and it's really really not. I like the bit there. Don't be an idiot. And it is about being a human. People say about softer mm-hmm. skills, etc. But it's treating people with like dignity, respect, um, and in your role as well. And I know in my role in the past, we've had to make some tough decisions. But as long as you try to do it with respect, and that people can see that you're trying to do it genuinely, people will always go with you. They may not like it at the time, but they'll mm-hmm. go. Actually, I really like that person because I respect them, rather than being my best friend and softening it, etc. If that makes sense. Oh, d- definitely. I, I think it's um, really, really important. Because I, I think as, as a leader, if we're doing a new, new business area um, and you kind of you can give a, a direction, basically anybody could, um, you know, use the latest management bu- buzz phrases and yeah. say, you know, in my world, it, you know, it could be about modernization or automation, yeah. you know, AI. You know, you could say all that thing, whereas you could use all those buzzwords, but not actually say something. Yes, so that yeah, people can yeah. really understand and connect with. And 
Um, I, I think people ultimately judge you by actions, not not just your words. Correct. And um, you know, I think the first impression when you're running a new part of the business or leading leading people, the real people are really looking at you, uh, not as uh, you know necessarily the kind of strategic direction you're taking the business but do i trust this person have they got good intent are they going to um help us uh, help them and help us be a good team and yeah uh, you know i I think i've realized that the first thing you need to do when you're kind of working with a team before you've earned that trust because i think it just has to be earned is um can can you know have you earned that right to um you know connect on a human level yeah and i really love that tom because that's the bit for me which is the power about the human level you can talk about ai we can talk about chat gt we can talk about loads and loads of stuff but how do you connect it to the real world is imperative and human beings like human beings that's a natural we've seen that with the pandemic where people have missed that human interaction Um, and i really love that about being genuine because then people connect Mm. with you and can see where you're trying to go um what would you say so you've worked with a lot of leaders over the years and that what would you say have been the key traits you've liked off other leaders so what have you said oh i like that trait of that leader i've learned from that what what would you say key traits you've learned over the years yeah so um the uh, thing i always r- remember is um a few years ago um about eight years ago i think it was i started doing an, an mba and I, I was and there was a professor on on leadership and that was you know really experienced and loads of studies on it and yeah. um i can't you know he spoke for hours we had hours worth of lectures but the, yeah. the thing that he said that really stood out to me was you have to get tom you know to be a leader people have to follow you yeah and you know you have to kind of create real real followership and you know as you, as you think you think about that um I, I think a leader has to um be able to give people a picture of where of where we're going to go uh, yeah. and how we're going to change and yeah. you have to be able to give a vision of the of the fu- of the future yeah. that you can articulate and um I, I, and that has to be clear and, and simple so that the team can then yeah. articulate quickly in their own words to their friends when they get home from work yeah um you know where are you going what are you trying to do yeah um and, and just to really bring this to, this to, to life um i remember probably 20 15 20 years ago when i first started um, my career going home and um at a dinner table with some friends in my what, 20s yeah. um describing to people what you know what I've done today at work and basically we'd put some prices up of um and fees up yeah. basically penalty charges and being really pleased because we were, I was making x million pounds off the, the bank yeah. and somebody actually you know, around the table said oh so I'm going to be charged more next month and it kind of just done with you know how yeah. proud am I of, of that um whereas now um you know I can talk about what we're trying to do in the battle to fight bad yeah. people yeah. and and i hope that all the, i hope that the team feel they've got the, they've got a role to play and part to play in doing that yeah. and i think um it makes a, a, a huge difference and that's yeah. what i mean about a, sim- a simple clear direction that people can then can describe to their family friends and loved ones and yeah. really and, and by doing that because they can use it in their own words because they really understand it and believe in it yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the bit about that connection again, Tom, that you're being your true self from work and home about mm-hmm. keeping it simple, keeping it relatable. How can you articulate? And I like the way you said about family, friends, it's not just work colleagues, but yeah. you want them to be proud of the organisation or what they do, that that's a big influence. Um, and that's harder to do to be positive we could all be negative and say well, you know I'll put charges up or this kind of stuff but mm-hmm. actually being proud and that clarity and also keeping it simple I think is really really key for people to connect isn't it oh definitely and um you know you know at, at the moment in my part of the business we've got a um rocket image because we've got we've basically got a kind of real moonshot about where we're trying to get to and yeah. you know it kind of try, we're trying to conjure up that that image of um, trying to be really bold and effectively kind yes. of go back to that kind of man on the moon because we're yeah. trying to do something really quite powerful and I think the, the simple messages that people can articulate and you know some people yeah. visualize so yes. there's, there's reason we're trying to create that simple direction people can kind of anchor yeah. on yeah and it does it does work and and 
you go back to your point, you know, without mentioning names, um, but I can remember multiple leaders that have helped create that. I don't, I don't really like to use the word vision because it feels a bit um, kind of corporate that. But yeah. I, I like to think about a picture and understanding of where we want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nice that that fellowship of people coming with you and then they start to articulate. You get a buzz off the back of it going, they get it. They actually, yeah. we all know where we're going, which is fantastic. Um, and the other bit, Tom, so mo- moving forward, um, y- you've had high pressure jobs over the years. You've got a high pressure job now, etc. How do you overcome stress, pressure? How do you keep yourself level headed, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so um, uh, so. Um, I'm sat here today. It's about it's 20 to nine. I'm in L- in London. Um, what I've done this morning, I got up at um, 4:50. I drove to my in-laws, picked them up, dropped them off. I live in Cambridge. Dropped them off at Stansted Airport and drove drove into work. And I was in the office for seven o'clock. And um, I say that because I feel brilliant having done that. Like some people, yes. I think Tom, you're nuts doing that at five yeah. But fundamentally, I was kind. Yes. And my in-law, they've got a place in 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 Spain. They've worked all their lives. They've chosen yeah. to do that, and um, uh, so and they really wanted to lift. And so I, g- yeah. I gave them it. And um, I, um, I, I honestly, I've had the best morning. Feel really happy. And and um, being kind and you know giving your time to other people because that that's yeah. just one example that I've used because it's happened this morning. Yeah. But um, Steve, I know um, you've done this a lot in the past personally as well, but I love mentoring yeah. um, people. Um, I um, give a bit of my um, time helping to support a kid's football team yeah. as well. And, um, I, you know, I find that that and there's definitely, you know, I'm not, um, you know, uh, yeah, I've not got any medical knowledge or anything like that, but I'm yeah. pretty sure there's hormones that release when you're uh, yeah. you're kind. I certainly, I just feel a different person, and you know, um, there's other things I, I I try to keep myself, you know, fit and what have you. But um, I think that being kind bit is yeah. is kind of really really important to me. And actually, as I said, um, I, I, there is a little bit of kind of science panda because i did my uh, annual health check the other day and they gave they gave um gave us kind of five signs of wellness and the bit i hadn't realized it is distinctly on there is um basically i can't remember the words but it was it was giving and being kind yeah. um, yes. so this, uh, you know and i know we are you know there's different recipes for different people yeah but you know if you look after people you know whether it be um, kind of being kind to your neighbour, someone in the yeah. um, community, which I think is actually growing post COVID. Actually, yes. you feel yeah. welcome. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think again, see, there's I think probably possibly a common thread here in about human yeah. connection. Yeah, but it's also that bit which you said about the chemicals within that dopamine hit you'll get of doing something good and nice is a nice feeling, isn't it? It keeps you going. Um, yeah. And actually, like getting up this morning, when you first said I got up at four fifty, four fifty. <laughs> I was like, wow, Tom, I'm, you know, I thought I got up early, but that's like superhuman. But then the, the bit for me is that the reason behind it, and I mm-hmm. could see the story, I was like, wow, that is brilliant. And that would give me mm-hmm. a buzz for the day, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, really good. Definitely. And um, if you were to look back at your younger self, if you were to live your life again or your experience, what three tips would you give the younger Tom? Uh, going into management or leadership, what three tips would you give? Yeah, the um, and again, see, I don't know what it is about this interview. You kind of, you've really helped like cast me back years and years because I remember being. I should be charging you for this. Time, I know, shouldn't I? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but being in Shaftesbury Avenue in London, and it probably was uh, definitely in my early twenties, and I, I was a young, exuberant, like driven person. That I probably yeah. you know didn't hide that. So not hide it but it probably kind of quite quite quickly visible to people put it that way which is a good or bad thing um and I asked a question of a senior exec at the time about leadership and um he didn't say this directly it was it was he was kind but he basically said don't worry too much about leadership right now just worry about management and yes. understand the difference between leadership and management and yeah. you know management is you know, about, you know, keeping your team you know, in the right, you know, almost like a task focused yeah. and looking, yeah. you know, looking after them on a kind of more day to day basis. Yeah. But leadership um, is is very much, you know, all about, 
yeah, things that you touch on, Steve, all the time, but, you know, you know authenticity about yeah. creating that picture of where people want to go and creating yeah. followers, um, really kind of showing your kind of human side. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that, I think that distinction's super, super important. Yeah. I also um, think, and uh, yeah, another image that kind of really struck with me is um, one of Simon Sinek's um, yes. kind of um, images. And he told this story about uh, Afghanistan and um, one of these kind of sergeants, he had a, one of his um, kind of privates was injured. So um, and he was being medically evacuated. Yeah. And this before he was actually taken off in the helicopter, the sergeant sprinted off and kissed his private, you know, on the forehead yeah. and said goodbye and kind of wave waved him off. And the point of that, that story, I can't like you know, trying to encapsulate yeah. the essence that if you really care about your team, like really care yeah. properly about their interests, yeah. you know, you know, yeah, some people can show that in I don't know, like hug, like hugging and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But if you genuinely want to look after them and and help them, yeah. I, I think that takes that can take the performance of those individuals and therefore yes. your team to an extra yeah. level. Yeah. Um, so I think that that true care um, yeah. really matters. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the bit when I went one of the, the tricks I learned many years ago because my behavior was I managed in my early management career because it's really good to talk about leadership and management Tom because people always think you've got to be a leader but no you can start as a manager and you, we need managers in the industry yeah. or in work because then leaders allow them to grow and develop but I always remember that someone said to me Steve you're setting people's objectives against your standards they'll never meet them and yeah. you'll always be disappointed so actually, I did kind of a flip of let me manage my pe- their standards, but raise by five, 10 percent and actually work with them as a true people about what they needed rather than what I wanted. And that was a real big moment for me in my kind of management to leadership career. It kind of transformed it because I looked after them rather than to my standards. Yeah, yeah, yep. I get that. I get that. I get that completely. And um, I think you do also. You, you remember. Um, leaders that took businesses in cert- certain directions but then you also remember people that have looked out for you and helped yeah. you at different stages in your career and you know see if i remember you know i don't want to embarrass you but i remember you looking out for me when i in my younger years when i was this kind of yeah. like highly driven person that could have made a whole heap of mistakes but you just need a quiet word just to say think about that think about yeah. your approach there um just be careful yeah. there and you know that you know you, you, you kind of realize, you know, you, you realize it's important at the time, but then as you look back, you realize that was actually pretty crucial in how much you appreciated it because yeah. so you, you, didn't, you didn't have to do all of those things yeah. for me. But yeah. I remember it. Um, I remember it now, and um, you, you kind of you really really value it because there's not, you know, a proper count on two hands. You know, people like you, Steve, yeah. that have have done that. You know, so it's. You know, not it, it's not. You're gonna make me go red, Tom. <laughs> everyone, everyone on the screen but, say, "Sunny Steve." But you remember, but you really remember that. Yeah. And um, you know, I think even if people, you know, don't get the thanks in the moment, because Steve, I'm sure I, pro- I don't know, I can't remember, but I'm sure I probably said thank you. But like, now I'd like to say a real thank you, because you don't realise necessarily the value of that at the time, yeah. and the fact that you don't have to do it because it's a choice. You know, nobody owes you someone looking out for you, watching your back or giving you a little nudge and what have you. Um, Because a lot of people, you know, I'd say eight out of ten people wouldn't. They don't have to. Well, I really appreciate it. And that wasn't pre-planned, so I really appreciate it. That was, <laughs> well, definitely go red, Tom. But that's hard to do. Definitely hard to do. So I really appreciate it. And I think going on that, there's people in our careers that you can look back and go, that was a nice human touch because today this is really good about learning about you about that human side uh, and actually your kind of true authenticity so um just to kind of finish off today for for yourself tom what what's your personal goals personal development what else are you working on this year for tom yeah so um there's a couple there's kind of like um you know a bit of a softer side where I'd say in the in the last month, I've just personally lost about half a stone oh, just wow. by yeah just by realizing that um, when I'm a bit stressed um, or busy, you know, I probably 
um, too quickly go for the chocolate tin. But I read this this smallest thing in the world, and you wouldn't believe this made such a difference, that if you move your, like your sweet treats, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth, but yeah. if you move them out of um, kind of arm's reach and you have to yeah. really like find yeah. them, or something, it can yeah. make a, a big difference, and it has. And, um, yeah. uh, you know, so that was just for me about how I felt about myself. And yeah. um, and I'm really kind of just like quite chill for myself, actually, for, yeah. for doing that. Um, but then I'm also doing... Um, uh, a, a qualification prints two for com- in the coming transformation world and i really yes, want to yeah, get yeah. into the um like technical detail of change so i can really yeah. understand it and advocate it so that's a little bit you know although it technically it helps in my role i don't need yeah. it but it's for me to get because I, I like to i know i'm not the best when i, f- I feel really confident because i deeply understand something yes I've spent yeah. time on it so yeah. next week i'm not in the office at all i've got a nine till five thirty training course yeah. And I feel so lucky if yes. honest, that my company will support me doing that. And yeah, yeah, I love that yeah. lifelong. So it's that lifelong learning. I think that comes you know, from kind of football approach right through my life. Yeah. I just love to kind of take myself into yeah. um, learning. And then um, probably the final thing would be, um, you know, the, the kind of the point of trying to be your best despite pressures, I think yeah. is always, you know, a, yeah. a journey. Um, so, um, you know, even you know, so, some, I'm a constant work in progress in that respect. Because now I yeah. sometimes can be snappy, and yeah. you know, but again, as well as being kind to others, I just tried to be a bit kind to myself. So it's the smallest thing in the world. But like after I dropped the my in-laws off at the air, airport this morning, uh, driving in, I thought, right, I'm just going to listen to the radio, yeah. and just kind of, I've got 45 minutes driving to London. I'm going to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so just creating a little bit of space for myself just to decompress a little bit before yeah. you know yeah. the day the day starts. So um, I don't know, but probably a bit. You know, I don't know. That's like a great formula, Steve, but that's yeah. that's where I'm at right now. No, I, <clears throat> and I think the bit there, Tom, is about it's about the real you, about mm. what are you working on. As you said, there's a nice technical part, isn't it, about your own personal development uh, from that point of view. There's that bit about actually just ca- carving some space out of time etc but also being your best and moving forward because that's the bit I try and when I work with people about some all, some people say look I'm just happy in my job and I stay how I am etc but they'll get overtaken and they don't develop or learn or even just to be current they yeah. stay as they are whereas actually keep moving forward a it makes you feel better you'll achieve more and that kind of stuff and it's not all about big achievements it could be small wins yeah. but it just keeps you going and makes you feel good doesn't it that's the kind of key to it Oh, without a doubt. And I think you're right, Steve. You know, I think we've got to got to realise that, the, you know, the world is changing quite, quite, quite fast. And yeah. Um, yeah, even I was talking to someone about AI, which, you know, and yeah. um, deep fakes and all this kind of stuff. And, you can, you know, I've got to be really on top of that, bearing in mind what job I do and fraud. Yeah. Uh, but six months ago that wasn't even on the agenda yes yeah, so, yeah. You know, it wasn't there and yeah. now we're getting all you know we're really kind of understanding defenses investing to build those capabilities you yeah. know i've heard that um you know basically if you had um you know something like ai in your job title in the U- on the west coast of the, sta- of the state people that just graduated the starting salaries are a million dollars you know wow. that, that's you know but yeah. because that, but it just shows the scarcity of people who understand that and the, how yes. the world is changing yeah, and yeah. um you know if there is any doubt that we've got to continue yeah. investing ourselves and yes. that's not necessarily it's not your formal qualification necessarily it yeah. can be com- you know conversations like this and so yeah. many different ways but We've got to keep moving forward yes. and learning. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So can I just say a massive thank you for Tom today being on our podcast? Really, really appreciate it, Tom. Um, very open, very honest. And I loved it, Tom. It's been really great to kind of go through with you. Um, but can I just wish you like the best for the rest of the day and also the rest of the year? But Tom, thank you ever so much for joining our podcast today. Really, really appreciate it. Pleasure. Take care, everyone. Cheers. Thank you, Tom.